Hey, what's going on? This is Steve Larson. You're listening to Secret MLM Hacks Radio. So here's the real mystery. How do real MLMers like us, who didn't cheat and only bug family members and friends, who want to grow a profitable home business, how do we recruit A players into our downlines and create extra incomes, yet still have plenty of time for the rest of our lives? That's the blaring question, and this podcast will give you the answer. My name is Steve Larson, and welcome to Secret MLM Hacks Radio. Hey, hope you guys are doing great. I've got somewhat of a fast episode here for you today, but this is a powerful lesson. Um, look, I used to do door to door sales, and a lot of you guys know that. Um, but I was a door to door sales guy, and I wasn't bad at it. And I was a telemarketer as well. And I chose to do those things on purpose because I wanted to be able to go through uh, experiences that would teach me how to sell in high pressure environments. I wanted to learn how to sell in in environments that that. <laughs> frankly, I wanted to get uncomfortable, um, which was a weird thing for me to realize that I needed to go do, but in order for me to grow and get out of my shell, I had to do that. Um, so I went and I started doing door to door sales, right? And I started, I started going and, and I wasn't bad at it. Like I said, and, and I would, in fact, I was the number two first year salesman, um, for like half the summer. And then there was this experience I had that completely ruined me. <laughs> okay. Uh, one day I was driving out uh, to the area. And I was with a bunch of other guys. We were in, a um, my buddy's, it's either a truck or SUV or, you know, I can't remember what kind of car, but we were driving out and there was all these billboards on the highway. And if I've told the story before, you know, it's kind of bear with me. Um, there's a, there's an aspect to this that I think you should hear. Um, we were driving out and all these billboards right on the side of the highway. And then suddenly I had the thought hit me and I, I <laughs> hard. I, this is, this is my exact thought. Isn't it interesting that I am driving out to convince people to spend money who woke up and were not planning to spend money today versus people who call these billboards off the highway are trying to get information on how to buy. I was like, that's interesting. That's very, very interesting. Uh, um, uh, <laughs> you guys ever heard the term uh, uh, prospecting pushes while marketing polls? right? I was basically prospecting. I was door to door wise. I was prospecting. I was going door to door prospecting this thing. Um, and, and that, that's the reason I don't like to go to the mall. I'm not telling you not to do that. I'm not telling you to not sell ways that you've proven to go do it. If you're, if you're a master at home parties, awesome. I'm not, and I don't want to learn to be <laughs> okay. And, and that's, that's part of the reason why those, because prospecting pushes marketing pulls, right? <laughs> and I want to be able to I want to be able to market and, and kind of pull people along who are already in motion. And so what I did though, so kind of back to the door to door thing. What I did though is, is I remember I was kind of ruined the rest of the summer and I went back home after the summer, actually in the, actually before I went home, um, I started placing all these ads all over the internet and I started, I started placing these ads out and I started saying things like, uh, um, you know, hey, here's our service. I basically put our pitch, the same pitch that I was giving to people on the doors, I put in ads on free classified sites on the internet. Um, I didn't realize that I actually was breaking some laws by doing that, but I was just taking action and uh, I had to take them down after a while. But what was crazy is my phone started blowing up and I was getting phone sales like a beast and uh, more sales than I typically was averaging in a single day were just coming to me. And my boss was like, how are you doing that? And I was like, dude, I literally just placed these ads out on the internet. Are you, oh my gosh, this is crazy. I was like, and I was ruined though. I was ruined. I had to take them down and, and I couldn't stop, but there was this, this opened fleet window of just like, oh, all these sales coming in, these sales coming in. I was like, oh my gosh, like, what is this? And it ruined me because I kept walking around thinking, I, I, I know that I could sell today, but how did that happen? <laughs> how can I replicate that? Is, was that just a fluke? I mean, it happened so quick and there was all these people and I got tons of, it was like, holy crap. And so I was ruined the rest of the summer because I was like, there's, there's a different way to do this. How do I do this? How on earth you can use the internet for this kind of stuff? Like I was so new. Okay. I was so green. This was four and a half years ago. Okay. And, uh, when I first really started learning about funnels, sales funnels and the internet and things like that. Um, and, uh, uh, anyway, I've never forgotten that. Okay. And I, and I went on to go learn how to place different ads in different places and how to communicate, uh, to a bunch of people at once rather than just one-on-one. -on -one, okay. Um, and 
fast forward a little bit. Um, uh, so Russell Brunson and I run an event uh, currently right now called the Fat Event, F H A T Funnel Hackathon. Okay, and for three straight days, we basically help someone set up the funnel and business and structure and sales message and offer to get them from zero to seven figures. And that's the whole event, and it's kind of high ticket, and it's a ton of fun. It's three days long. People, we we really don't let people sleep much, and it's awesome. And we had this realization though. Okay, it, it, we were prepping for one of these, and uh, he gets on stage and teaches a while. I get on stage and teach a while. We get on together. We teach a while. That's how it happened in the last one, anyway. Um, and then he leaves, and then I pretty much take um, the full second day, almost, and then almost the full third day. And it's a lot of fun. We would go from 9 a.m. to midnight, and it's a long day. It's a long day to be on stage. Long day to be on. Long day to be turned on and and be in on mode, presenting mode the whole time. And it, I really like it. But we were planning for one of these events, okay? And we were planning. We had done it many times. But we were just, re- you know, refining. We were making things better, and and there was, <laughs> we had this epiphany, okay? We had this realization while we were preparing that one of the major reasons why why we were being so successful with this stuff was because what what we had learned how to do was instead of selling one to one. Okay, this is super key, but you guys, oh my gosh, what I'm about to say here can change your entire MLM for good. Okay, this is the reason why I I, this, I know why I'm being successful with this. Okay, I know why my funnels work. I know exactly, it's not an accident. Okay, I know exactly what is pulling people to me and I know exactly why I'm able to still breathe. I know exactly why I'm still able to live, have time, do things that I'd like to. I know why. I know exactly why they convert and why, why it's being successful, which is worth way more than being uh, successful by accident. <laughs> okay, um, and here's why. It, can't, it had to do with this realization um, I don't know how many months ago this was. It was, a lo- it was a while ago, though. We were preparing for one of these events. And we had this realization, though, that the reason we were being so successful was because we had learned how to sell one-to-many instead of one-to-one. Okay? It's the reason I don't like to go do hotel meetings. It's the reason I don't like to do, uh, you know, talk to people at the mall moves or talk to people, you know, it's... <laughs> I'm not good at those things. They stress me out. I'm not. I'm actually not that amazing uh, person to person. I'm fine on stage. It's funny enough. Like I actually am more relaxed on stage than sometimes one on one. You know, it's not that I don't want to meet people or that I don't like interviewing people. I do. I love that stuff. It's awesome. But for some reason, face to face, like I don't know. I don't know what it is. Like <laughs> it's my personality or something. I'm not shy, but uh, I'm more comfortable on stage in front of a ton of people than just one on one. Okay, which is interesting because selling one to many is the whole thing that I teach people how to do at that event. Okay, it's it, and and the the type of presentation that allows the entrepreneur to do that. All I've done, all I do with my actual downline is I teach them how to sell one to many. Okay, instead, it's how to pitch one to many, how to be how to be um, prospecting, how to be marketing one to many instead of one to one instead of thinking through the two or three people that you could get into your downline do you know the average person only pulls in like i heard the stat was like 2.3 people in their whole mlm career ever holy smokes guys i pulled like 20 people in in my first week why and i'm not bragging i am not bragging i'm just trying to prove to you that what i'm talking about works okay um, and then they all went out and they recruited people. I have no idea how many people actually in my downline. It's a lot already though, which is awesome. Just so cool. Why? One to many. And so you got to start thinking through, start thinking through yourself. Like there's, there's, here's one of the easiest ways to start thinking through a one to many presentation. You've got to include some automation behind it. Okay. And I'm not telling you to become an, uh, a tech guru or tech whiz. Will it help? Sure because everything is technology now, okay? But you don't need to be, okay? The first time that I ever put a one-to-many styled pitch out there, I didn't realize I was doing it. I stumbled on it, okay? There was a course that I was putting online, and at first I was making people buy it, but I thought like, how interesting if I just made this thing for free? And what I did is I took these these videos, and I know that some of you guys are from those early days, and you've been following me that whole time, and I appreciate it, and that's awesome. 
But what I did though is instead of making them locked, I actually just made them available to everybody. And and funny enough, weirdly enough, um, I was testing a few concepts at the time without actually being in an MLM at the time. I had left my first one. I was, <laughs> you could say I was between MLMs, <laughs> okay? But I was testing some concepts. This was probably three years ago. Um, yeah, yeah, three and a half ish, three years ago, somewhere around there. Anyway, and I released them and I put them out, put them out there. And what was funny is. Um, um, at first no one saw them because I had, I, they were still like a paid thing. I think I'm trying to, it's, it's so long ago and I built so many funnels and pages and lived on the internet so long that I'm trying to get the story straight regardless, regardless of timeline. Okay. All I did is I, I, I put these things, I, I made them public on YouTube instead of like hiding them, instead of making them unlisted. And what was interesting is how many people on a steady stream started reaching out to me asking to join my downline and I was like fascinating oh my gosh it's working right and all these people started jumping in and I ended up joining one um, I, so I guess this is my third one interesting I didn't do anything in that second one I joined it out of frustration because of so many people were asking me to <laughs> I won't say the name of it but I joined it out of frustration simply because uh, my boss was in it and uh, there were so many people who were asking to be a part of what I was doing. I, I just needed a place to go, <laughs> you know. But I don't. I, I got out of it because my heart wasn't in it, which and I, I, I do believe does matter to a degree. So I got out of it. Um, anyway, though. So so that's all I'm trying to say, though. Is guys think through the pitch. Think through what is the stuff that you say to every single person. I know you say the same thing to every single person, which you should, which is great. That's the script. Like stick to the script, you know, understand (laughs) you deviate very, very slightly if you need to, but like, how do you measure? How do you, how do you make progress? If you can't measure it, how can you measure it? If it's different every time, like it should be the same, you know what I mean? So what I did and what I'm doing right now, just so you guys know, is I I am furthering my one to many pitch, my one to many pitch. And so what I do is when someone wants to join my downline, um, they go through an application process at joinmydownline.com, uh, which I, I did a whole episode about that. If you want to hear about it, how I do it, why I did it, um, uh, please don't go apply unless you're serious about it. Um, it does. It is an actual live thing, um, which it's crazy, guys. Like get anywhere from one to two people applying a day almost, uh, which is awesome with no ad spend, nothing else. Like that's crazy. Um, it's It's grown like all over the place. And again, this is not me beating my chest, guys. I just want you to know that like, gosh, it freaking works. Like you should do it, okay? <laughs> no one teaches this in MLM. Like that's the thing that frustrated me so bad. That's why I decided to come back to the industry. I was like, are you kidding me? No one told me about this stuff the first time I was going through that first one. Are you kidding? And so what I did is, is and what I'm doing is I'm creating a one-to-many pitch. So after somebody applies to join my downline, I'm creating a one-to-many pitch, meaning I recorded all of the ones of me doing it live over and over and over and over and over again. So I know what all the common questions are. I know what the biggest questions are. I know what the biggest concerns are. And I know there's an episode I talked about my, my you know getting fuel for my auto-closing script. I think it was like two or three episodes ago. But this is the evolution of that, though, is selling one to many. And what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to hit this this topic again because I feel like it's always funny for me to see which ones, which episodes of these I get a lot of feedback on, which ones I don't. And the ones I don't, I'm like, God, are you kidding? Like, that was one of the biggest pieces of gold I could have given you. <laughs> like, please, for the love, did you understand that? So I feel like I have to hit it again. But go create a one-to-many pitch. That is the reason why this thing works the way it does. And you don't just create a one-to-many pitch or an auto-closing script once, okay? You go through it and you refine it, and you refine it, and you refine it, and you refine it. If you are creating, if you've never done the pitch live or if you've only did it a couple times, do not automate it, okay? It's terrible to automate something that's broken that wasn't good in the first place. Don't automate crap, okay? Make sure you're automating good things. But that's the whole purpose of this, guys, is, is uh, um, and that's what I was telling people at one of the last events I was doing, too. It was day number one. I was getting on there, and I stood up and said, hey, look, I want you to understand that what you guys have the opportunity to learn is the opportunity to uh, uh, f- learn how to sell one-to-many, which is very unique, very unique. And, and the easiest way to go about this is to start looking at how you, 
the last the getting fuel for your auto closing script that episode two or three ago that was all about getting res, uh, um, uh, critiques and responses and and writing down the concerns of all the people who are who are coming in uh, uh, and telling you no right no or yes but specifically no okay what are what were all their main concerns right and they're giving you a lot of fuel that's why it's called you know fuel for the auto closing script but the other flip side of it the reason I wanted to bring this up which is taking me a while to get to. I'm so sorry. But the reason I bring this up is so that you know, um, uh, you you start paying attention to the things that you're saying over and over and over again. Okay, it's this, this the auto closing script is this marriage of both those sides, both what the market is telling you no over or yes, but mostly no. And then uh, all the things that you're saying over and over and over again. And it very well may not be related at all to the script that your MLM has given you to say. Okay, it may not be related to that. It may not sound like the one they gave you. That's fine. Okay, that's fine. Um, anyway, that's all I've got for you guys. This, uh, <laughs> I guess it really wasn't that much of a shorter episode, but that's it. You guys understand that. Start thinking through the things that you're doing over and over and over again as far as uh, pitching, and learn how to automate it. Um, and then go and, and, and you could do it with YouTube videos, honestly, and just put them out there. Someone who is looking for YouTube uh, information on how to get better on their MLM uh, and YouTube, that's the kind of person who's who's there to, to be successful. That's the kind of person who's there to, to, to be a rock star. To, uh, they're looking for information. <laughs> you know, It's a great place to be. Um, or podcasting or whatever it is. Whatever you decided to do, um, uh, but learn how to sell one to many. The secret sauce is there. If you look at the way a lot of the top people in your MLM are number one, I guarantee you there are several of them that are there because they created a one-to-many pitch and they sold it from stage. Hey, we're gonna get it in the order of the, the of the people who who are, um, uh, you know, uh, how should I say this? Order forms in the back, and you join my my downline in the order that we get the order forms in the back, right? And there's a big table rush that happens in the back, and people go run into the back and they fill out the forms and they're throwing the forms back because they want to get first because they know everyone else is going to be below them automatically, right? That's a one to many pitch. I'm not telling you if to go that extreme, okay? But there's some aspect to that that you can pull into into your own MLM. All right, guys, that's all I got for you. Hope you're doing great. Um, I am uh, refining really phase two slash three of my auto closing area um it, it, it is i'm building it as i need it just like anything else so i need it now all right guys i'll talk to you later bye Woo! hey thanks for listening please remember to subscribe and leave feedback would you like me to teach your own downline five simple mlm recruiting tips for free if so go download your free mlm masters pack by subscribing to this podcast at secret mlm hacks radio.com 